Okay, well, hi everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our second session of our Tabula Rasa online retreat. And uh, yeah, for this session, we're here in the studio uh, in Mexico, and uh, we're joined by Eric and Jason, and they've been uh, facilitating and overseeing at the mystery school that we have happening here. So I'm going to pass it over right to them. So take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I'm really grateful to be here with Jason. We we go way back, Jason and I. We have <laughs> we have we've had a lot of deep collaborations <clears throat> over the years in this community. And as Peter just said, we've recently been collaborating um, at the Mystery School. We have our Tabula Rasa Mystery School happening right now. I, I think I, I don't know where they're on this. There they are. They're right in the second row at our Tabula Rasa Mystery School. And I love this theme because that's what we're really practicing. Um, this theme of I place my future in the hands of God is, is very much related to the term Tabula Rasa, which means, I think it's uh, Sanskrit or what, what language is it's, It means empty mind or empty empty slate, maybe not Sanskrit, but <laughs> Latin, I think it's Latin, which, yeah, yeah, approval from the <laughs> we have, a, we have a yes, good. <laughs> and that's what we practice every day at the mystery school is really giving it all over to the spirit and not, not having to know what the day is going to look like. Um, I see Beverly there. She was at our mystery school. And um, we, we heard from a man earlier on the, the morning session who's coming to our June class. And it's been an experience of just going much, much deeper into trusting that the spirit will handle all the details, that we really don't have to figure out what we're meant to do in terms of the practicalities of of what seems to be daily human life. Um, we're, we're literally given the steps. And the moment that we try to figure out what we should do or that we plan, it's like Jesus is really happy with us doing that if we, if we feel we need to, because that's that can sometimes just help us feel a little more peaceful because what's really happening is that we're transitioning in our mind from a belief in control to the realization that that I've never had control and that God is in control always. And yet we have to be convinced of that very step by very gradually in a way that that doesn't, you know, feel uh, too traumatic. You know, like that line in the course where Jesus says, you know, fear not that you'll be suddenly hurled into reality. Um, he's also saying, fear not that you'll be, that you'll have to just give up all control in an instant. Like in my experience, it's been very gradual where I was, I was given guidance about specific aspects of my life, like my career and my relationships about you know, where to move to, what, what to do. And, and each step that I was given, I was, it felt like a major letting go of control. I remember when I was guided to get married, for example, I, I felt like, oh my God, I, I really wanted to be a bachelor <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> and the spirit is guiding me to get married. That's, that's definitely going to be a loss of control. Uh, but you know, I could feel that it was it was also going to lift me out of this this Eric self concept, and it it did. It really helped to undo a lot of the control that I I didn't even I wasn't even aware of what a control freak I was, you know, until until I took certain steps. That was you know, getting married was one of them. Going on a a world tour, going to visit places I had never been um coming into this community i mean every time 
I would come into this community. I started volunteering here about 10, 12 years ago. And every time I would, I would feel guided to come and volunteer for a month or a couple months, or even just come to a retreat, uh, it was scary because I could feel that when I'm here, I, my old control mechanisms don't really have a place. You know, they're not appropriate. I would still try. <laughs> I would try very hard to maintain control, but, um, but being surrounded by mighty companions in a context where the whole purpose is to let go of control and to be, to be open to, to the spirit, it, it just, yeah, it kind of forced me to keep questioning the, the ways in which I wanted to be in control of my life. And my relationship with Jason was very, uh, very instrumental in that, actually. There was a lot of collaborations that we had where yeah, I really wanted to be in control. And I just was <clears throat> remembering the time when we were on a, a like a driving trip. I shared this in the mystery school recently where we were in Canada and we, we had a gathering that night that you were going to be leading. And you asked me to, to sit in the front seat and navigate for you to how to get there with the map. The bus? No, we were in a car at this point. I think we had gotten we had arrived at somewhere and then we had a car to go to this place. And, I, and you invited me to be in the front seat and, and help you navigate. Well, I got in the front seat and I, I said, I started having my own ideas about which way to go. And I think you already kind of had a sense of which way we, we were guided to go. And so I started just giving all my opinions about which way we, oh, no, let's turn up here. And, and you weren't feeling it. And I, I just got angry and I was like trying to be like in control of, no, we, if we take this, it'll be a shortcut. And <laughs> everything I said, it was like coming from this control. And then finally, I remember you just pulled over and you said, Eric, I don't know if this is going to work. I think, uh, I think we should switch with, uh, I think Carrie was in the car or someone and switch with me. And I remember being like so crushed, like I failed at my, at this little tiny role you had given me of, of, of helping you navigate. But I also remember it was really, it was really helpful. Like it was humbling. It showed me that, yeah, like this, this control aspect within myself that needed to get exposed and yeah there were there were many many experiences like that over over the years with jason and with others in this community that yeah helped me let go of um trying to be in charge of my life and i'm really inspired by the mystery school right now because we're yeah, we're actually getting, we're, we're about two thirds the way through. We have, a, have about a week and a half left. And a lot of the students and also some of the interns, we have an internship program and we're actually gonna be interviewing a few of the interns here tonight. And one of the students that's here in the studio with us, um, a lot of them are, are starting to really pray about their next step. Like when they leave here, what will they do um, which was always a big concern for me too i would come and i would dive into the community and really really give myself over to the healing and the forgiveness lessons but then when it came time to kind of go back out into the world so to speak it always felt a bit scary like how am i gonna like wow i've just gone through so much healing and so much transformation i feel like a different person now how am I going to be able to relate to my my family again, my dad and my sister? And and yet each time I was guided to leave the community, perhaps because I had learned as much as I could at that at that point, <clears throat> I would go back and and then I would have to face things with my dad and my sister that, um, yeah, it, it was like an integration, like I had to transfer the training to everyone. And it was always so perfect. I, I feel like Jesus has been very, very gentle with me. And I'm, I'm just so, so grateful for how gentle this path really is. It feels pretty intense at times. I'm sure that you've experienced intensity along the way as well. But ultimately, I can see looking back how it was, it was all orchestrated to be, mm -hmm. to be very loving and very gentle. Yeah. That can seem like... It takes years to even accept the plan, at least in my case. I thought I was a rabbit for God in the beginning, and I was just telling one of my housemates today that it's actually not helpful 
but it's more like a turtle, this theme David brought up years ago. Tortuga in Spanish, be more like a turtle because the healing really is in mind. And as long as there's that rabbit there kind of driving the way, you miss over the underlying lessons as if it's something in form. And for years I was guided to marry Emily and I did get married to her, but something in my heart had never really fully landed and accepted it. And so I recently got married again to her and this time like with full heart and yeah, you're talking about control. When I hear I place the future in the hands of God, I think, I think really I, I give over choice. I give over the possibility of choice to God and I just want his will and I didn't know how deep that went actually like getting married was like letting go of choice potential I didn't yeah potential of another relationship a, a relationship that Jason would have chosen and it was God's plan for Emily and like it's just, I can still feel like the power in that in accepting the guidance because all of a sudden it's like this whole segment of the mind just drops away and I, I just started getting calmer and some kind of anxiety would just dis disappeared and and then, in, and then that, that feeling that I used to judge as, as like a failure or bad was reinterpreted as actually, it's just like an inner calling, an inner peace that's strengthening. And now it's slowly being transferred to all sorts of areas that I'd made exceptions to. And, and I don't have to fight that feeling. It might come up as like, even a resistance at first, but I know underneath it, some kind of choice is disappearing. And, and that to me is placing the future in the hands of God. Even I think yesterday or today, our house, our house is kind of an admin house and two of the people really like meeting at the kitchen table every day and talking, which means I have to leave the area. And I was starting to feel like I don't feel good about this. And I would express it, which is, you know, what we're to do. And I expressed it and felt good saying it. But then all of a sudden this fear came over and I was like, wow, what is that fear? And I just remembered, oh yeah, okay, there's something underneath this. So I just gave my full attention to it. Again, choice is coming up. I started journaling. I, <laughs> it's like embarrassing. I want to do what I want to do. I want to choose. And I'm like, oh, there's that choice again. And and just seeing that something in me settled and I thought I have this mission to support, which is kind of like an overriding guidance right now. Wow, I want to support them. Okay, show me how to do that in a really deep way. And just that prayer, the fear just completely disappeared and yeah, I just sunk into this like, super deep meditation for like 40 minutes, last track of time, definitely placing the future in the hands of God. So yeah, just when I think of that I think of letting go of choice and accepting God's plan. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, that's deep. An idea that we don't actually have any choice. <laughs> we definitely have an illusion of choice, but there's certain guidance that comes in, like getting married, that seems to, yeah, remove choice from certain aspects of our life, which it seems is can be like a really helpful stepping stone towards ultimately accepting that. We never had a choice anyway. It was all scripted. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, we recently did a concert at the Mystery School, and we it actually started as is this idea for yeah to to um, have more music collaboration and to give everyone an opportunity to to see what it's like to collaborate with someone for for healing and purely for healing and and the concert idea was kind of just like a backdrop like a an excuse for there to be collaboration and so I think it was about two weeks ago at the mystery school, I started doing sessions with the students and encouraging them to 
to pray and to open up to lyrics and song ideas. And yeah, I had them write a letter to God uh, as, an, as an exercise to just open the channels of what would I say to God if I could write to God. And then, and then I had them write a letter from God back to them. Like, what would, what would God say to you? And then let, and then be open to seeing if anything in those letters could be, could become lyrics in a song. And we actually did two, we did a campfire about a week ago. And then we did another campfire uh, two nights ago on Wednesday uh, with, with a whole nother set of songs. They actually had a bunch of songs come through them for the first campfire that were, yeah, kind of a, feeling of being done through that was there's actually one of the songs that our friend David Smickley wrote is called done through and it's beautiful we're going to play because uh, we recorded the concert that we did a couple nights ago we're going to play those clips for you tonight of this music that yeah it was so beautiful the whole concert was really a demonstration of of giving yourself over to the spirit and letting the spirit sing through you and and perform through you um, to like, I will step back and let him lead the way. <clears throat> so I think we'll go more into some of the, the depth of, of, um, yeah, the healing that, that occurs through that kind of collaboration and, and continuously giving it over to God and saying, I, even with the music, even with planning a song, I, we have to keep giving the future over into God's hands. But maybe for now, um, we could set up the first clip of the first song that was performed that night. And uh, I was there, I, I was kind of the MC, so I, I, I did like a brief uh, introduction and interview with the, with the musicians who are our, the students at the Mystery School and as well as the, the interns in our internship program. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and play that first song? It's called uh, be thou my vision. I think this one was actually a, like a hymn, like a kind of like a Christian hymn that that our friend Betty was inspired to um, to sing, and there was a whole choir of all the students and interns with her. So, yeah, we'll sit back and enjoy this first song. Welcome to our concert, everybody. <laughs> We have some beautiful songs of the heart tonight. And to start with, I was feeling to ask um, anything that was where the song came from, like any inspiration. So maybe I'll ask um, Betty first if you had any thoughts about this song and kind of where the inspiration came from. Absolutely. This song is Be Thou My Vision, and it's an old traditional Irish hymn. And I've loved it for forever. But I was really, really surprised and happy when they showed the movie, uh, The Pilgrim's Progress, and part of this song was in there. So I said, well, this is perfect. We got, we got to do it. So be thou my vision with the, uh, the choir. <clears throat> I keep 
Um, what we're going to do next is shift into an interview. We, like I mentioned earlier, we have a few of our interns here tonight in the studio with us, and also one of our mystery school students. And um, yeah, I feel the first one I, that we have actually up here on, on the set with us now is our friend Dini, uh, Dina K, and but we call her Dini, and she's been. <laughs> She's been in our internship program since, was it, uh, when did you get here? April or January 20th, I think you arrived. But you were also in the mystery school. Yeah, I don't know if she, is she already on camera? Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure about jumping the gun there. Um, yeah, Dini came to our mystery school in, <laughs> was it the, it was two mystery schools ago, I think, right? September. In September, yeah. yeah. And then now, You've been in our intern program for um, the last two two months or so, and you actually just committed to come to stay for another three month internship program. So yeah, the first thing I was feeling to dive into is just the like what it's been like for you, um, because I think. Yeah, it's it's deep when you I, I just know for myself when I started to kind of volunteer and I started coming to retreats, it seemed to be a big speed up like things in my life started to to change more quickly. Um, like the spirit was working with me and the symbols were starting to re get rearranged um, my yeah that my connection with my my family I started to have you know question the. The, the strong belief in like valuing biological family versus spiritual family, um, you know, versus just opening up to guidance and seeing everyone as my family. Uh, it brought up a lot of, of deep values and that I started to look at. And I know that you've been looking at a lot of things as well. I think my first question is when you were here for the mystery school, uh, and then at the end of the six week mystery school, you decided that you wanted to come back and be part of the internship program. Um, what was it that you saw about coming for an internship program that that was calling you or what did you feel would be the value in doing that? Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, during the mystery school already, there was this idea of service and like a collaboration like in in teams um introduced and yeah i remember um i was in the kitchen team and in our first meeting i i felt yeah i got quite emotional and because i felt like oh my god this is such a beautiful opportunity and i had been very lonely before mm -hmm. like living on my own and very much focused on my career and feeling very, very lonely at times. So 
yeah, I felt like so this this co collaboration that really felt so good and and service this idea, yeah. And I felt wow, it's so freeing if I'm if I can serve and I'm part of something bigger and I don't have to make up my my plans or <laughs> like my own plans and yeah. Hmm. So yeah 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 also i you know I, we do a lot of expression sessions in our community and in with the mystery school students and with the interns and i i feel like i was always impressed by how you you expressed very easily like you would you would just drop in like immediately you would drop into what was at the core for you you know, what, whatever the emotion was, like if you were feeling, or even if you weren't sure what you were feeling, I always had the sense that you were somehow able to just drop very deeply inward and then express from, from your core. I don't know if you see that in yourself, but I'm curious to hear what expression sessions have felt like for you or how you've seen the value of those in the community. Yeah, they've been extremely valuable and I felt yeah often like I I can I have to express like I don't know I've had times where yeah I just I just had to <laughs> like, <laughs> pour it all out and other times um, yeah my heart starts beating and I know I have to to or I know there that there will be a great like I will feel much lighter <laughs> after mm. I express and. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I was> like blank. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> We're placing this interview in the hands of God. <laughs> yeah. Also, you mentioned your career, which um, relates to the music, because that was your career, I believe. You were. Um, Maybe you can just share about what your career was. And then I'm curious, you were actually part of that song that we just saw, you know, singing. And I, I think you shared with me like a week or two ago that, that the music collaborations we've been doing have been very healing for you because, because you were a professional musician or, you know, in your career. And this has been an opportunity to experience music in a very different way. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was um, a classical saxophonist and I had a, a quartet. Um, yeah, I was very much focused on like playing as much as possible with the, with the quartet. And yeah, when we started, yeah, actually, <laughs> I was like thinking, should I bring my, my saxophone to Mexico? And then I didn't really feel it, so I didn't do it. Um, and then when you brought in this idea of music collaborations, I've, yeah, I felt already this like, oh, I have to, I have to prove that, or like, um, yeah, I have to show that I'm, I'm here the professional musician. <laughs> like, and also the ego like came in with that because I, I remember you, like Betty, who we just saw, she, yeah, she has this also like, uh, like, career as a musician and a teacher and you brought her in as like our choir, <laughs> leader. choir leader and, <laughs> and as I remember you you were there introducing her and you were like yes yeah, she has a master in music and my ego and like <laughs> I have a master in music <laughs> uh, so uh, and then and then I had to face all this like because I I was never able to to improvise or to just play piano or do like I was very spontaneously. much spontaneously yeah, yeah to spontaneously play something or or to I don't know improvise. jam or improvise I was very blocked I got with that I was great with reading sheet music yeah. on my instrument but, mm -hmm. uh, so then I had to face like suddenly singing and singing harmonies and I couldn't find my voice and all this like yeah what was this all this music uh, education for if I cannot even <laughs> sing a simple song and then uh, by expressing that that helped a lot and then I could actually enjoy a lot singing the songs and hymns and mm. even also improvising with singing and yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's sweet. Yeah, the the I think the last thing on my mind to ask you about is um I feel like you've had some healing with your family. Um I remember when you I think when you we first started the internship program here um I shared that you know it'd be it would probably be helpful to let your family know that you're like on a deep spiritual retreat and that you're really wanting to be focused here and to and to that you would only be available really for like emergencies. And I remember you shared like, I can't do that. Like I need to talk to my family like regularly or something. And at the time we just prayed and said, okay, that feels great. But then since then, it seems like you actually, I remember one time you came to me and you said, you know, I prayed and I actually do feel like I want to tell my family that I'm, you know, like I want to, I want to tell them that this is the most important thing to me right now that I'm, I'm focused on my spiritual healing and, um, I don't know what you actually said to them, but that, yeah, I think there was a conversation you had with them at some point about that you wouldn't be in contact as regularly. And maybe you can just share how that how that went for you. Yeah, that that actually felt really good to um, to follow that guidance from you. I, I remember you were at some point saying like, yeah, I still feel that that could be helpful. And it wasn't. I didn't feel, oh, I have to do that or something. I just felt like uh, maybe there is actually, maybe I actually do want that. And then I, I sent them a message and I had to wait for a bit for an answer. And then all this fear came in, like how they would react to that. But then their reactions were very loving and very, yeah, they said like, well, it's going to be a challenge for us, but we, yeah, we, we love you and we, we, um, you're happy to know that you're there and that you're doing well and yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's mm -hmm. beautiful yeah i remember when i first had to just start to tell my family that i didn't feel as i didn't feel guided to come back for all the same re family reunions like i i used to we used to have so many my family had parties all the time and i was always going to all of them and and then it just started becoming kind of empty like i just want to meditate i would go to parties still sometimes but then i would i would i would get overwhelmed by all the people and i would just have to go into a room and just meditate and people would come and find me like eric where are you come back to the party but then eventually i had to just start to say i don't want to come to the party anymore i i'm focusing on something i don't know totally different right now and yeah it feels like we all, all get guided to start to take these steps inward that seem to dissolve old patterns of how we relate to our family and friends and yeah. Do you have any uh, questions or? I do have a question. I remember at one point you, uh, you actually immersed in and were even in leadership with the interns and just really helped help set the tone to get ready for the next mystery school. You were loving it. And then something came in where you felt overwhelmed with leadership, maybe didn't even know that unconsciously. And at the same time, lost trust in your own leadership, leadership that was given you to follow in the community. And it was a hard time for you. How did you make it through that? Like, what, what insights or <laughs> what what came to you to be able to make it through and be in joy now with, with the system and the and the process that's given yeah that 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 feels like the biggest thing that <laughs> that's happened and um yeah yeah i remember it was actually before the start of the mystery school and um at some point yeah, I had a call with Frances and she told me like, yeah, I had a lot of, I wasn't trusting, like I was, yeah, many things didn't make sense to me. And I was like, yeah. And she told me like, you will find hundreds of reasons not to trust, <laughs> uh, but you will not, you won't feel good. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah yeah 
so I don't know if there was like, mm, yeah, that that conversation was definitely very helpful, and and I think everything, but I I wasn't aware <laughs> I think so much, but I remember when the mystery school started and all the students came in, somehow also my mind shifted. Maybe I felt like so it felt so good that they were all coming and um yeah felt like activated mm -hmm. um, yeah really grateful um yeah i remember one time when i had to make a choice between two contradictory thoughts played out by people and one of them was was david and i remember having to decide it's like this is what is it? I have to choose and so I did okay well I remember he's the one I came in for and I was like okay I'm gonna trust and I just remember it being so simple and it really worked well you know and I'm gonna trust him and I just remember being a decision trust was the decision was that an experience that you had was yeah it? yeah I think yeah yeah the day after the call I had with Francis I was on this walk and then I felt like okay yeah, I don't know how to do this, how to make this decision. <laughs> I'm just going to tell myself, okay, I'm going to trust. And yeah, yeah, it, it felt, I don't know, I feel, um, I don't really feel like I'm, I succeeded <laughs> in that decision or something, but somehow it, yeah, it, it things have changed. Hmm. Uh, very, yeah. And, and it's, it's what I want to see more and more, hmm. like, yeah, trust as much as it can. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, thank you so much. Feels like your presence here has been a huge gift. I think for all of us is, yeah, I feel like there's always healing for me with each one that I work with, like, is like a different aspect of my mind and working with you and with the other interns has yeah it's been a huge gift for me i feel so grateful to be in this role with with you guys and with the whole mystery school and yeah it's a, it's a, it's a huge honor i feel like jesus is just entrusting all of us with these these roles seemingly these temporary roles that uh that are helping us go deeper and helping us to like really see that what he's teaching in the course is true that we are miracle workers and that we have we have way more capacity than we we thought you know like we start off on this journey thinking i'm just this this person with these limitations and then i don't know i feel more and more now like like that line in the bible of myself i can do nothing but with god all things are possible and and god just working through me in ways that I, I couldn't even imagine years and years ago. And now it's just so beautiful to see, see the fruits of the mind training. <laughs> so I'm really grateful that you're, you're here with us. I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> yeah. Before you. yeah. Well, I think on that note, um, we can go to the next song from the concert, which, um, yeah, it's, it's our friend David Smickley I mentioned, and uh, our friend Jen, who's actually here in the studio with us. Um, David wrote this song called Done Through, that is really what we're practicing, how to step back and let the spirit do all things through us. And so um, I think we'll play that one, and then maybe we'll play the other song right after that, that happened in the concert, which is another beautiful one called that our friend Dennis wrote called let my voice rest in you. It was him and a bunch of others that collaborated on it. So yeah, and then I think after those two songs, we'll, um, we'll go to another interview with our friend Anna here in the studio. So enjoy these next two songs. Okay, our next act is David and Jen. And David's going to play his wonderful song, Done Through, that we all heard last week or whenever that was. And maybe you can share a little bit about just anything that comes to you about the song and sure. 
Yeah, where it came from. Sure, so this song was given by the Holy Spirit. Here at uh, Mystery School, we, uh, we all wrote a letter to God. And the next day, the song came through. And it had uh, all the words from my letter. So this is a prayer song that we're going to play and sing with Jesus for healing. As I look back on all the work you've done, unwinding my mind and showing me signs you are really the one. You've always cared without any demands. You've waited in patience and held me dearly in your loving hands. Done through after all the years of holding resistance, needing control, and wiping the tears. I want to be done through and feel you in my heart to know that you love me and always with me from the very start. It's hard to think I'm worthy of your love, but the guiding symbols and shining miracles from heaven above, I want to know the truth of what I am. Your beautiful teachings keep me reaching for the promised land. After all the years of holding resistance, needing control and wiping the tears, I want to be done through and feel you in my heart. To know that you love me and always with me from the very start, I need look beliefs are in my mind living in fear it's been so clear I'm lost and blind I can't get through all of this on my own stuck in illusion and in confusion I need to be shown that I've been wrong about what I believe so I'm ready to listen give up control what is best for me just show me the way that I can truly serve your miracle worker as you handle all my lower order concerns I want to be done through after all the years of holding resistance, needing control and wiping the tears, I want to be done through and feel you in my heart. To know that you love me, always with me from the very start. I don't know a thing here, this ego self-concept is not really me. I've searched the world over for an easy solution that'll set me free. I'm here to surrender, give you my mind to do as you please. And I'm done with this world now, it has no value, I'm down on my knees. I want to be done through. After all the years of holding resistance, needing control and wiping the tears, I want to be done through and feel you in my heart. To 
know that you love me and always with me from the very start. I gotta be done through after all the years of holding resistance, needing control and wiping the tears. I gotta be done through and feel you in my heart to know you are with me you always have loved me and we've never been apart okay so this is a song that i think you wrote no it was it occurred in the moment of us um, talking about it and I just was moved to do it. I was just moved to join and... The lyrics just kind of came to you. Came to me, but we changed a bunch of times. And yeah. the, the changing was just an organic, collaborative process that was yeah. guided by a spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Do, they, do you want to say anything more about the process and how it was for you? Gosh, it was so great to... Uh, Dennis took a risk in like unleashed his voice at one point and that's when it kind of really started to come together the the melody um became evident and it was just really great to be a part of oh, sweet and it's called let my voice rest in you is that it yeah let my voice rest in you Beautiful. you being god yeah okay All right. All right. perfect peace runs so deep it makes me weep with joy in my heart your perfect love brings me peace it makes me whole it makes me complete there's nothing more I need sing sing me through let my voice rest in you Let my voice rest in you. Sing, sing me through. Let my voice rest in you. Sing, sing me through. Let my voice rest in you. It is really beautiful, lovely music. Well, we have our friend Anna in the, on the set with us now. And Anna has, you came to the mystery school as well. Were you, you were at this, not the one that Deanie was at, but at the next one, I think. And then I forget how much time went by, but you, you left and then came back for the, oh, you just stayed on, okay. <laughs> <laughs> time is all collapsed for me um yeah and i i think we talked a little bit <laughs> earlier too about some of the healing that you've experienced here and like what 
what made you decide to stay um, after the mystery school and to do the intern program and yeah you've been actually over the kitchen the last uh, two months with I think a lot of healing there because you're probably the most busy person on the on the grounds with having to do all the shopping get menu planning I mean two meals a day plus kind of lightly overseeing the breakfast um, it's like a full-time function but yeah you've just been like so I don't know it makes me want to cry a little almost that you're you've just been so willing to give I, I know you've shared that too that you just feel like you would go to the moon and back if you know if someone asked you you just like the, the willingness is so high and I think too you've had a lot of um, kind of overwhelm come up as well like feelings of pressure because I know you've shared with me that there's a bit of a doer you know we just heard the song done through and yet there is this doer that is in all of us that wants to take over and even when we're given guided functions it's it's really yeah, the ego wants to usurp that and then use it to kind of overwhelm us so I know part of that too was with the garden I remember early on we we talked about you have had a lot of experience in the garden you love gardening and yet there was a point when you started to kind of get a lot of body pain because you were in the garden so much and then the guidance came in for you to step out of the garden and we told you don't go into the garden <laughs> just just do the kitchen which is probably still very strenuous but it was a different kind of it was more of a mind a mind thing at that point so I don't know maybe you can just share a little bit about what that was like for you the lessons that you've had around doing versus being done through and leading the kitchen team here these last several weeks yeah I feel like I I want to share a little bit about what made me stay yeah because um because it's a question I'm asking myself even now repeatedly like what is this done through thing like I really want to understand it in a at a whole at the next level but um I, coming to the mystery school was um I saw I saw my friend Lorraine hi Lorraine she she brought me with her well I said okay I'm coming um I had I had six weeks um I had signed up for this uh, trauma facilitation two-year program just right after mystery school and I had such a profound shift during during mystery school to just be very much like what Deanie was sharing. Um, I'd been really sort of lonely, really kind of trying to make something of myself um, with hypnotherapy and, um, you know, helping the world and helping trauma and all this stuff. And I mean, I've never felt so much trust and joy as I did during mystery school. Um, and I just, I just dropped out of the program that I was committed to for two years and um, ended up staying for for the internship and um, I think that I've put so much you know I've been trained to be useful, you know, sort of a jack of all trades, also with like a high level education so much of what David and Francis were sharing about this morning. Um, and then this sort of empty feeling like I don't I don't I don't seem to get anywhere with this. Um, you know, I feel so capable and yet something would keep me from a, a complete sort of immersion into any one thing. So I've been a gardener. I I have a like I said, high level education. I taught yoga like mastery level and never really never really became a great teacher or anything and so i felt like this failure and um i was married i have a daughter an 18 year marriage that ended in 2010 um so i feel like i've just come out of this chapter of a lot of sadness in my life um you know being the one who left the marriage broke up the family all because nothing it was this like is this all there is exactly what 
mm. um, David and Francis were talking about this morning. And I, I, I do have fear about leaving here because I haven't felt joy like this, you know, of like being in the kitchen and just knowing that I'm serving something more than what I think I have to make of myself. Mm. I'm in service and I don't, I don't understand why that's so joyful to mm. me, but it is. Um, and, and the mm. other thing is the trust thing. Like I think in mystery school, I, I know I had like authority, the whole authority thing, like who are these facilitators? I remember Jason was there and I was like, what are they doing with us? Like I had all this like questioning come up and then somewhere along the line, I, I don't know what exactly broke it. I think it was just knew, knowing that you guys were always in prayer, that like forgiveness was just like, I've never, I've never felt so forgiven. Like I can do no wrong. The whole idea that everything is a backdrop, even though like I want to put out the best spread ever, you know, and at the kitchen table, but, um, the trust, uh, just knowing that I'm, I can trust in this whole sort of hierarchy of guidance through you guys and then trusting this, beginning to really trust this voice that is really my, I think it's my voice. It's just my intuition. It's not like a, a booming voice. I kept thinking it was a booming voice, but I feel like, oh, I can use this in the kitchen. I can, um, I don't know, I can go pick the lettuce. I sneak into the garden anyway. And <laughs> I mean, everybody knows about it. No private <laughs> thoughts, but like, like, can I please just water the garden? And like, um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know if that's yeah. helpful. Beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. I'm blank. <laughs> that's so easy. <laughs> Just rest in the not knowing what the next question is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the words come into my mind right now is we've, we've talked a lot about true empathy and false empathy too. And that's like, yeah, I feel like that's the deepest lesson in the course to. Because, yeah, we had that incident where there was a, a baby owl that fell out of our tree. <laughs> and, and, like, it was, like, such a such a such uh, an opportunity to practice true empathy because, really, like, there were ideas. Well, maybe I think you, you said, can I take it to the, the animal control center or something? And it didn't feel like, <laughs> like it was really flowing to do something in form but it was in the owl i don't know if have you seen the owl lately is he still around i feel like it dropped out of our mind but it was it was such an opportunity for staying in true empathy and remembering that 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 we don't have to do things out of trying to fix anything in the world including it looks like a a baby owl a baby brother owl <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah i was I really had to sit on my hands to, uh, first of all, there were two of them that dropped out. One, and then one was kind of caught, its wing was caught on this palm tree cut frond. And uh, I did take the garden rake and lift it and gently bring it down. So the two of them were there together. And mm -hmm. I mean, I did reach out for the, you know, rescue of Chapala, animal rescue, but nobody answered me. And I, you know, thank you, because it was such a lesson in trusting that, you know, if, if I'm rescuing some someone or something, then it takes away their strength, their, you know, some, you know, quote, natural course of things or holiness of their, of their own journey, Brother mm. Owl's journey. Um, mm. But during those, I think there was two or three days where I was just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because I'm just sitting there watching these beautiful little creatures with heart-shaped faces, mm. you know, die of starvation. 
But little did I know, I, th I think what's happened is that because um, Coase, another intern, and I were, we were sort of like, you know, looking over the situation daily would peak. And I kept trying to get you to come and see, like, come on, don't you want to rescue these guys with me? Um, but we saw like there was like dead mice around them and little, you know, pelts of, so they were, I think they were getting fed at night. And for two nights in a row, this parent owl was like literally outside the window of my bedroom screeching. So it was really a lesson in my, it's like that those guys are in my mind and it's all there for me to let go and trust something bigger. And I learned, I don't have to go around putting fires out. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I place the owls in the hands of God. Yeah. And then every day at the mystery school, practicing that with all the people, of course, because all kinds of little issues come up where, you know, I think someone had like a scorpion in the room and, and like, like all these different issues will arise and it's and of course, the first temptation is to try to fix it, like to make make people feel better, like with using magical means. And yet when we do that, we we really do. It's like we're usurping the spirit's role, like how can we know what is going to be truly most healing and most helpful for everybody? And we can't unless we first go inward and pray and say, I do not understand this situation of myself. I, I need, I need to rely on guidance that's beyond my intellect of what I think the situation is calling for. And there's been yeah, a ton of, I know just with you leading the kitchen team, there's been a lot of things with the different uh, the people in your team and yeah, projections and healing. And yeah, I don't know if anything comes to mind that you feel to share, but I think that's that's been pretty deep just being in a leadership role. I remember you telling me once that you feel like like this inner like inner Hitler coming up a lot of times where you you want to like you're trying to be guided, you're trying to be done through, you're trying to lead the kitchen with love and yet there's still this kind of filter that the ego is is putting this pressure to be spiritual or to to be loving on the surface and yet a lot of of stuff will come up underneath it, like a like an inner yeah Hitler or yeah some kind of control, and yet it's almost like we have to allow that up to to heal from it, to forgive ourselves for the control that we have within. And so I know you've been experiencing that and diving into that, and it's been yeah, it's been beautiful. Yeah, I would say I would tend more towards you know, people pleasing and having, you know, all this harmony and making sure everyone's comfortable doing what they're doing. And um, yeah, I was, I was encouraged to actually be m much more direct and um, to, to allow any, you know, anything that just feels it's, there's, there are no like fuzzy emojis around. It's just like, Okay, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And that was really hard for me. Um, and uh, I, I did encounter my own, you know, my, my doership, my being the doer and knowing that I do things well, um, that I wanted things done well. And sometimes they weren't done the way I wanted. And it was, it was difficult for me to say, well, actually, I want it done like this, or we're going to have to do this a little bit differently. And, uh, but I, but I have encountered that control, that, that controller that has been so well trained to do things quickly, efficiently. Um, you know, again, I'd have to sit on my hands and like, instead of saying, okay, never mind, I'll just do it. 
right, to allow that to just come and trust. Um, yeah, it's. I, I wouldn't have it any other way, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been really profound. It undoes the false empathy of yeah. the, the, the belief that I have to be nice and I have to be sweet and all that stuff. It just mm -hmm. starts to wipe that away where, yeah, I can just be myself. I can just say what I want and trust that everyone can, can handle it. Yeah, I think I, I, I was journaling about this and I, I mean, I, I use the word confidence, which like I have developed, I think it's trust really that I, that it's okay if somebody's not happy, happy with how I am, or if I'm, you know, if there's projection going on, like it's okay, it's okay because there's a deeper purpose here that's happening and there's healing for all of us. And it's the it's beyond the right and the wrong. It's that Rumi poem about the field, you know, and I'll meet you there, like somewhere in the middle of the field is between right and wrong, I'll meet you there. Mm -hmm. And uh but I, I do feel this like groundedness in like sort of claiming like that whatever skills I have or the doer around, you know, the garden and the kitchen or whatever is being used for something so much. It's just beyond anything I ever imagined. Like mm -hmm. that comes first. Like I, I don't think I'm going to go back into the world, so to speak, with the same angst and fear of like what how do how do i make it alone it's not that's gone i feel mm. like that's gone from you know the the tabula rasa experiment it's just amazing mm. yeah. yeah thanks so much anna it's beautiful to have you here with us thank you <laughs> i'll probably be back yeah, I hope After so. I leave. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's see what the next uh, two songs on our okay. our list are. <clears throat> uh, I want to go home. That was another beautiful one with David, Fabian, and Anna. They said, well, actually, the next two songs were ones that, that Anna was on. Um, I Want to Go Home, which was an original. And then, um, and then you and Betty did an Elton John song called Love Song, uh, which is a sweet, yeah, one of my favorite Elton John songs, actually, that's pretty obscure. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll cut to the next two songs from our concert that Anna was in, and, and then we'll uh, come back for our next interview, which will be with Julie. Enjoy. Okay, our next act is, this is a song called I Want to Go Home. I think you guys co-wrote this song. Who was, who started to shoot it? came from you initially? Yeah, so it came up uh, when we were uh, jamming with uh, Janet. Uh, Janet was playing some chords and we were all jamming and then something, I heard someone do a home and uh, I started to hum that chorus, like I want to go home, you know, home to the life. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so I started to, to play it and then uh, uh, David joined, and then uh, Anna, and then, yeah, we just, day, every day we polished the song, <coughs> and then Kos. In the end. Yeah, and, and I did he's, that he's perfect the touch. Band member. Yeah. This is pretty miraculous how it came together in just a couple of three days. You know, we started strumming, and it's like, what's this going to be? And here we have, so. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. Coast in the gang. Coast in the gang. Yep. Hey, you ever say? Sometimes I wonder. I thought I left you. Rank 
could make it alone I don't know what's true anymore This dream is so broken With darkness and pain I'm lost in I'm falling to my knees, dissolving in you to you, like the river meets the sea, we are one, I want to go home.
is a cover song of an Elton John song that um, not many people have heard. It's called Love Song. And do you want to share anything about your inspiration for it? Um, sure. I just, uh, it just came to me. I've known it since I was a little girl. I used to sing it in the car with my dad. And it's super simple and just says it all to me. So. You guys are going to sing it a cappella. A cappella. Yeah. <clears throat> The words I have to say may well be simple, but they're true. Until you give your love, there's nothing more that we can do. Love is the opening door. Love is what we came here for. No for you more do you know what I mean have your eyes really seen you say it's very hard to leave behind the life we knew but there's no other way and now it's really up to you Love is the key we must turn. Truth is the flame we must burn. Freedom, the lesson we must learn. Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen? Love is the opening door. Love is what we came here for. No one could offer you more. Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen? Love is the key we must turn. Truth is the flame we must burn. Freedom, the lesson we must learn. Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen? Do you know what I mean? Have your eyes really seen? Okay, well, we have another one of our interns in this on the set with us. Hi, Julie. Eric. Hi, Jason. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> hmm. So you also like Anna and Dini, you came for the mystery school and then decided to stay for the intern program. I feel like you also recently um, you were thinking you were planning to leave after the end of this intern program and then you had kind of a, a, a shift where you suddenly realized you wanted to stay and um, yeah I think with, within the theme of I place my future in the hands of God I'm wondering if you can just share what um, what what caused you to make that decision to stay and yeah I'm sure um I'm, I'm wondering if I should go back to even yeah. why I came to mystery school. Yeah. Um, I worked as a court reporter in Houston um, um, for many years. I was in a marriage, married almost 25 years, had two sons. Um, and at some point, um, I realized, you know, that I wanted to know God. It was actually after my first son was born. So it's been about 23 years and just went through this series of searching, looking at different churches. When I, I took classes in Buddhism. I, um, I did a yoga teacher training and really got into meditation and 
had this realization I was looking for a teacher. Um, I was also into the course, but actually while in a Course in Miracles class, somebody was handing out flyers um, for this enlightened guy who I went to see and he like became my teacher um, for maybe a total of 10 years. Um, but I went off to India on a silent retreat. It was in the lineage of Ramana Maharshi. And um, I thought, wow, this is, this is what I'm here for, to wake up from this dream. Like this is, and the, when I went to India for the first time, I had this realization that I was definitely gonna move to California, be a part of this community. And uh, when I got back from India, my marriage just fell apart. I had actually known for like 10 years but had so much fear about leaving that I I just kept trying to make it work or something. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, and I wanted to share this too because of the people that I, I know, so many people, you know, struggle with this question. And um, yeah, we were able to stay on really good terms and actually have, I think, more love for one another now than we did during the marriage. And um, even at that point, like I left and I went through just this period of so much depression. Like I, I thought, wow, I messed up. I need to go back. And he would say, no, you did the right thing. I think what you're doing is great. And um, huh. so anyway, when I realized, yeah. So I ended up moving to California and lived there for a couple of years and uh, was in silence a lot and just looking at my stuff a lot. And like spirit was just gently <laughs> showing me all these signs that well the song kind of fell it did fall apart um and and just spending so much time alone realizing wow i feel really isolated like what is i kept praying what is the purpose of my life you know and i got back into the course started listening to david all day long and just felt this heart pull to come to mexico Really, it was like community, it was co-living that appealed to me. And then I found out, you know, you guys were doing the mystery school thing. And so I just, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to come for mystery school and even had this idea in mind that I would just stay in Mexico, oh. which is what it looks like I'm going to be doing. Oh. And so mystery school was, um, it was an amazing experience. I mean, just everything felt guided, like I have a grievance or I want to express something mm -hmm. and I and the spirit would just speak through the other person vice versa we were always saying wow that's just what I needed like. Mm -hmm. So um, as soon as I knew there was such a thing as an internship I was like yes. <laughs> <laughs> almost like i hope they, i want to get my name in quick you know so that yeah so that i get to come back and do this hmm. um so you you were gonna move to mexico though after this internship why right. why did you stay on instead of sorting your life out in okay mexico? so i'm getting there um <laughs> um yeah, so I got to the internship and I had so much resistance and it's, it's I kind of get a kick out of it now because I thought I was all in and yet my attachment to like being able to make my own decisions and, and like, you know, having to follow rules like I just was angry I was angry at Eric for the first month, at least like he's just a dictator and. Um, something shifted just very slowly like i i knew that every grievance every like upset was coming up to be healed and that this was good you know just kind of trusting the process more and more and i think it was shortly after um i was leader of cleaning and you probably you probably remember what a big deal that was for me like i have never been in a leader role and it, was, it felt terrifying hmm. And yeah, so I knew it was perfect. And I got to find out that, okay, if you'll just trust and allow, and you don't have to know anything, like it really will, the guidance will come, everything will flow, you're not responsible. Another thing you told me that was so helpful was um, just be willing to completely mess it up. Huh. Um, 
so anyway, yeah, I went from thinking, okay, my plan, you know, this is all well and good, but I can, I can do muscle mind training and then kind of go back to my idea of, okay, I'll live in Mexico and go to lunch and have my cats. And so I sort of had this idea of what it would look like, but then I thought, no, I really, I'm getting so much out of this mind training experience and the community living and and service and all of it that I just wanted to be guided and you know, it was like the next day when Dini said Lisa wants to know you know are you staying and it just yeah I'm why would I not stay I think I'd be sorry if I didn't stay I think I remember that you were it was one thing to just kind of be in the internship with no students here and doing what was asked and expanding and and then when the students arrived and you were given a group of students to lead and speak up and communicate, something in your heart just went like, boom, what? Why would I ever leave this? Somehow there's so such an expansion in learning to share what I feel or direct, even communicate. But I, I think that's a big part of what happened to you as well. That's right. And it's just one more belief that I've held my whole life is I'm a loner. I can't be around people, you know, and that yeah. was seen through in mystery school. Like, that's just not really true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still feel really sensitive sometimes and need to go off by myself. But um, but yeah, being being with other people and being like just part of the flow of this one thing just feels so purposeful and um, yeah, it feels so good. It's, yeah, it's a complete flip from, from life before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. I, it's beautiful, probably you can end it on just, I feel it's a demonstration of I place the future in the hands of God because you even came down with one plan, but just being willing to see where the expansion is. You just went for it, and that takes a lot of courage. So. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm just grateful to be here, grateful and clueless. So. Hmm. 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 Thank you, Julie. <clears throat> well, we got a half hour more. We got some more songs. Or? Yeah, we've got got a few more songs. We've got. I think we'll do two more now. And then we'll bring Jen up and then our, our last, down. yeah. And then our last song is actually one that Jen, Jen did. But um, yeah, the next two songs, well, the first one is a song in Spanish. Well, actually, Betty will explain it at the be on the recording here. So I'll go, yeah, we'll, we can cut to the next song, No Se Encanta La Casa, which was like an ode to La Casa de Milagros. <laughs> and then, uh, and we're going to put the lyrics in the chat, both in Spanish and in English. So if you want to see what, what it means, I think she's going to read it, though, at the beginning. Um, and then the next song after that is, is The Saints Go Marching, but A Course in Miracles version of, of A Saints Go Marching. It's a, it's a good one. Okay, here we go. So this next one is, uh, I think it has a Spanish name. It has a Spanish name, And yes. it has Spanish and English lyrics. No, just no, Spanish. No, just Spanish. But okay. I'll explain the English. We'll explain the English. <laughs> and it's called No Se Encanta uh, La Casa. La Casa. So it's like an ode to La Casa That's, de Milagros. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so tell us more. Okay. So uh, at one of our um, expression sessions or meetings or something, uh, Fabian made a, or I guess it was when we were working with the music, Fabian made a remark about, gee, it'd be nice if we had a Spanish song since we're here in Mexico, we have something. And uh, so I woke up one morning and I thought, yeah, there's that wonderful old Celito Lindo. Ay, 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 you all know that, right? And so I wrote some English words and then translated them into Spanish and then checked with our Spanish expert here. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Janet. See if I got it right. It's called Nos Encanta La Casa. And what that means is we love La Casa. So the English words that I wrote were, we have come to Chapala, to Casa de Milagros, where we pray, we sing, and we learn how to forgive. Ay, 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 ay. We love La Casa. We are one together in Christ and in the heart of God. 
So that's the English translation of this song, okay? Donde oramos, cantamos, y aprendemos a perdonar. Ay, 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 nos encanta la casa, somos uno en Cristo juntos, en el corazón de Dios. You kind of got that? <laughs> Hemos venido a Chapala, a la casa de milagros, donde oramos, cantamos y aprendemos a perdonar. Ay, 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 nos encanta la casa, somos uno en Cristo juntos. One more time. Hemos venido a Chapala, a la casa de milagros, donde oramos, cantamos y aprendimos a perdonar. Got there. Ay, 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 nos encanta la casa. Somos uno en Cristo juntos. En el corazón de Dios. En el corazón de Dios. En el corazón de Dios. Okay, so this is the saints go marching in, but you're calling it something else. The marching saints. You changed the lyrics a bit, or or no? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, what happened? Um, um, this idea of the saints uh, came about because I had to do a rap with Jen, right. and there was this piece in between, and it was reserved for me. So that was a, a, a challenge, so to speak, and. Um, I wasn't living up to it, but in, in, at night the saints came marching in for me and that became the whole new thing to do here. And later on we, we, we wrap the very end of this uh, and that's still a living thing de uh, developing right as we speak. So we have to wait and see about that one. But this one can start with the saints go marching in. Okay. Everywhere. Okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. How I want to be in that number When the saints go marching in Oh, when my heart begins to shine When my heart begins to shine Oh, how I love the way District in Amsterdam. Even there, God works His miracles when the saints go marching in. This is a call. 
course, this is a course. This is a course. This is a course. And nothing unreal exists. We all love to be at La Casa. Here it lies the peace of God. All of us saints are lining up. We are joined and lined. I think that was my favorite one, <laughs> especially with Benny, the dog, who just he started howling. <laughs> uh, hmm. Okay, well, we have our last interviewee here on the set with us. We have Jen, who's a student at the Mystery School. Hi, Jen. Oh, you got to grab your mic. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Well, maybe you can just share like what brought you to mystery school and um, yeah, just anything prior to that that kind of led you into feeling you wanted to come for that experience. Gosh, I remember hearing about mystery school years ago. I thought this was going on for like a decade or something. I mm. must have heard about it pretty quickly after it very first began in its like initial iteration. Yeah. I know it's evolved a lot and changed. And it just had stuck with me, like haunted me in a really good way that, oh gosh, how cool would that be? Um, and then it was really last summer, uh, Thursday afternoons, there were like open for everybody, these sessions that David facilitated um, that I tuned into that felt so supportive during Corona to have this thing that was like totally free um, and regular. Uh, and, and I kind of caught a vision for just um, La Casa in general uh -huh. and the vibe. Uh, and I thought to myself, gosh, if I could go do that soon. And then, I, then the plan just started to evolve. I really felt a, a call to, to make it a priority. Ended up selling my house, moving into a condo, resigning from my job. And, and, and none of that was so specifically to um, to come, but absolutely kind of wound up in the whole thing. I, I resigned to be able to um, in March, uh, February 1st so that I could come for the whole six weeks because I thought, who's going to give me a job and let me be gone for six weeks? Well, apparently my people did because they, they asked me to, to come back afterwards, but they totally supported me in coming and it just everything fell together so beautifully. Um, yeah. And, and, and I just, I just had the sense that I wanted this dedicated time. Like this was a gift to, actually I've been thinking about it as my honeymoon with God. Like, God, we've never had a honeymoon. Let's go to Chapala. Uh, <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. 
And um, I know you've had, yeah, you shared one, like, I think you're going to share a miracle you had with um, the instrument for peace, which is a worksheet that we have for going through, like working through upsets. Remember you shared with me that you had, um, you had some, some miracle or some healing or when you found out about the instrument for peace, I think it was at a session you said with Jason even, and I remember there was something you shared about that, that yeah, maybe you can just share what that was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had like a platinum grievance, right? Uh, I, I <laughs> yeah. thought, yeah, so I, um, I, had, I was feeling a lot of conflict toward one of the facilitators. And, um, and as we've been talking about, we're encouraged to express that. And, and so I did. In fact, as I expressed it to her, I, I ended up telling her, gosh, I feel hatred in my heart for you. Uh, can we you know, I'd love to, can, can we get together and, and, and look at this together? And what I perceived the response was, um, uh, was that she said, um, no, that's not necessary. And the conversation moved on. And that night, and, and so yeah, platinum grievance, I'm here in Mexico paying all this money, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> and the facilitator won't let me, won't, doesn't want to look at the hatred in my heart with me. And um, so of course, that's this, the, all the narrative. And then, uh, and then Jason led the session that night, actually, the whole day conspired to help me really look deeply. But we looked at the we looked at the instrument for peace. And I, I got to be one of the, um, there were a couple of us that got to sit up and move through it together um, with, with Jason facilitating. And um, we went, we drilled down. Uh, that's kind of how I think about the instrument for peace. Like I'm drilling for the crude oil. And so we drilled past the perception, my idea that she had basically said no to me. Um, we drilled through the emotions and I discovered that in addition to, the only one I was really aware of was my anger. But as Jason prompted me to continue thinking about my emotions, I realized, you know, there was resentment and I didn't want to admit it, but there was hurt. And that primed me to continue <clears throat> drilling deeper um, through, uh, through the thoughts and to the beliefs. And that's, that was the gusher. Because um, Jason, as Jason asked the, the questions, um, what, what was it that I was believing uh, that, that I was proving myself right? How was I using this situation to prove that I'm right and God is wrong? What, what belief was I upholding and clinging to. And that's not exactly how it's all worded, but really, I think that's what it's kind of about. And as we drilled down, I realized, you know, what's the general belief? Uh, and it was um, after I got through some others that didn't really have any aliveness to them, all of a sudden I said, um, this, this, this world is a lonely place. And then I said, um, I'm, I'm alone. I'm all alone. And that's when all oh, the tears started welling up. I think I think you felt it too, Jason. I think you were like you were feel it was palpable that that was the gold. That was um, and it was just gushing up that that's that's what I was feeling and believing. Mm -hmm. And so um, took that to bed with me. Or before before I went to bed that night, I just really thought about it and like, okay, uh, I believe that this world is a lonely place, and that's my favorite flavor of separation from God, uh, and, and I'm, I'm out to prove it. Obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, this is one example of how I am out to prove that I'm, I'm right and God is wrong. Um, but so I gave it up, I, I prayed that night, God, I, I don't know how to solve this. I am so grateful to understand this more deeply, but still not feeling all that different. Um, kind of just gave it to Holy Spirit, trusting that I couldn't do it. I wasn't gonna be able to solve this problem. Um, and, but at least recognizing it felt huge. Hmm. So I woke up in the morning uh, and that's the best part. I woke up in the morning, it was still dark out, kind of going through my morning routine. And, um, and I heard this cat outside um, howling, like, you know, the forlorn, you know, that cats can do. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and, and it was still dark and I couldn't see it. I was looking out my window and I'm like, telepathically, I'm telling the cat, you're okay. I can hear you. You're not alone. <laughs> and all the emotion of all this, this, these years that I have trained myself to believe that I'm alone, um, to tell God that I'm right. See, this, this world is a lonely place and I'm alone. Oh my gosh, it just came flooding through me. And I, I cried 
I like bawled mm. and laughed because it was release of the loneliness that I was feeling for so long, um, just being just released. And I was laughing at the realization that this was a defining moment. Um, I, I was never gonna see the world the same again um, because I'm gonna believe God. God tells me I'm not alone. And that in fact, that I couldn't be alone if I tried and I've tried. Um, and yeah, um, in fact, even in today's lesson, lesson 91, smack dab in the middle of the lesson are four words, you are not alone. I'm seeing it everywhere huh. now um, because, I, because, I'm, I'm, I, because of the decision point, that's the end of the drilling down in the um, instrument for peace, the last, the bottom line is recognizing what our desire is. And um, what I realized is, yeah, I had to give up my desire to be right about my assessment and my experience, my felt experience of the world, so that I would quit seeing all that crap everywhere I look, trust that God is right, and that I'm not alone, I couldn't be alone, and then open my heart to start seeing that everywhere and that it has been a game changer. I mean, categorically different experience of life for me. Hmm. Um, yeah. wow. Oh, that's so profound. <laughs> and then you wrote a song about it. I wrote a song about it. Yeah, well, it, it came to me. It came to me like right before David's movie workshop last weekend. I kind of had it on my heart as you challenged us to really, or invited us um, to ruminate on what we were learning. And I thought, gosh, if I could come away with something that captured for me um, that, euf that euphoric uh, experience of this, this instrument for peace. So I guess I, I give a little intro for it, but that's, mm. that's really what, and, and, and I'm super glad that it, it, in five minutes I had it, it's just a little ditty, but it's my ode to the, um, the instrument for peace. Mm. Thank you so much for being here, Jen. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll go to our last song, which is Jen's song called Peace Y'all. <laughs> Enjoy. So this is the last song of our concert. And this is a rap song called Peace Y'all. <laughs> and I heard a bit of it and it's really awesome. Do you want to say anything about it before we... <laughs> sure. Um, I am so not a rapper, but when the spirit gives you a rap song, you rap. So, uh, yeah. Oh, gosh. This song came as a... Uh, a download right before a movie workshop with with David. Um, I had had such a profound experience with the instrument for peace, just like a week into our time here at Mystery School. Uh, really a, a life changer, like a total perspective change. And I'm still feeling the reverberations of it. But this song captures the, um, it captures the euphoric, triumphant, uh, feeling I had uh, after my experience with the instrument for peace. So it's uh, just a song of joy um, about that moment uh, when, when my perspective changed. And I'm super grateful for my brother, Coast to Coast, <laughs> who's joining That's me for sure. yeah. in, in this, um, adding some mad bebop uh, to it. Yeah. We, we have to wait and see uh, about this one. <laughs> Should we do it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Desire, belief, thought, emotion, perception. See through the veil of fog my own self-deception. Take responsibility to know my reality. Take responsibility to know my reality. No guilt, no guilt, no guilt, no guilt is possible. Just look through the tear, heal the heart, and claim the miracle. <laughs> Unity, unity, unity alone is real. Only my desire to feel can make it seem real. Only my desire, only my desire, only my desire, only my desire for God can lift me higher. Peace all. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
first time I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jason wasn't at the concert, so he's just <laughs> first time. Kos uh, is uh, rapping there. Was, <laughs> that was a musical expression session <laughs> with oh. <the> full passion. <laughs> uh, so good. <sighs> hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I just feel so much gratitude for this mystery school experience myself, and we're almost at the end, and then we go into our prayer stay period, which is it's always so deep. We it's kind of in between our mystery schools. We have this period where where all of us who've been facilitating the school, it's like our chance to really step back fully and just go into silence, go into deep, deeper stillness. And, and then people come to La Casa to, um, to also be in silence with us and just to, yeah, be with God and, mm. and really just watch the mind. And it's like, there's so much healing that occurs through the interactions, through all the collaborations, but then we go into this prayer period where it's, it's like very vertical, very much just, um, yeah, dropping everything and being fully with God and, and watching, watching what the deeper healing that comes up from that. So, <laughs> yeah, I love, I love both aspects and uh, just grateful for everything that this path is providing to me with giving it all over to God and not having to know the way mm. it's meant to look mm. day by day. It's like when I look back at how my life was before the course and very structured and always trying to make succeed in the world. And then now it, it's just, wow. Like I have no idea what's coming in the future, but I, I really don't feel like I have any concern for it. Mm. It's such a gift to fully place the future in, in God's hands and not know. Yeah, and thank you for <laughs> all the help you provided me along the way too. It's it's a deep friendship. I'm yeah, so grateful for that. for you. It's an honor to be here with you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Took us ten years, but we <laughs> yeah, we yeah. finally healed our grievances. <laughs> really, or at least you know mine. <laughs> I finally healed my grievances. <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. That was. That was really beautiful. It's yeah, I'm grateful for all of your witnessing to to the devotion to this journey with us. And yeah. So have a beautiful night. <laughs> and I look forward to watching the movie with you all tomorrow with David. It's it's a movie I actually haven't seen yet. I won't tell you what it is yet, but I, I always love it when David shows a brand new movie that, or it's not a brand new movie, but a movie brand new for me. So yeah, lots of love to you all. Everyone's the monastery is waiting. Hmm. Oh yeah, we see the monastery there. Oh. Mystery school. Mm. Thank you all. Lots of love to you.